Also, here with me is Ajina Angelo. You're welcome. So the landscape that was selected for the study is in the Sudo district of Ethiopia. And it's largely devoid of trees. As we can see, the tree cover is very low. And so is in need of extensive restoration and um, revegetation measures. So given the large scope for restoration, initial projects on watershed management and FLR taught important lessons. So one of such lessons that was identified for the Sudo district is this. Matching project plans with available governmental budgets and local human capacity is crucial for the success of FLR initiatives. That's just one of the many. However, um, could you please explain the background and importance of this lesson in the context of the Sodo district of Ethiopia? Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> Sodo district, uh, as uh, many parts of Ethiopia, is uh, having rag, rag terrain um, and uh, uh, population pressure is there. So uh, much of the vegetation is uh, um, removed because of uh, extensive uh, uh, farming practice and so. So to, to overcome this, there were government plans earlier uh, being practiced to restore the landscape in a number of years. But uh, it, they didn't show significant success. Uh, that is because of um, ambitious and then uh, inachievable plans put in place and then spreading the, the budget uh, to these very large plants. So uh, when you have a large area uh, under uh, plan for restoration and then uh, little money with uh, a few capacity capacitated human resource, then that will never come to uh, successful uh, restoration. So that's uh, uh, changed in, with this project. Um, we have um, uh, seen that uh, this project uh, was uh, based on consultation with the community. They have prioritized an area because there are so many thousands of hectares to be uh, addressed in such a way. But they should be prioritized and then given due attention. So the first area was this lower Maki, and then uh, um, budget was uh, uh, located from uh, 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 foreign resource. Then uh, <coughs> uh, we have seen uh, a better distribution of uh, labor, as well as uh, the performance was better than what the government used to do. So the mismatch between the budget distribution and planning is lesson to be learned. Here. Right. Okay. Now, given the need for large-scale restoration, uh, restoration of the treeless areas in Ethiopia and the experiences with the ongoing projects, so what are the prospects of having long-lasting landscape improvement in the Sodo district and even other areas in Ethiopia? Yeah, um, similar uh, activities are being uh, uh, undertaken in, uh, in the forest landscape restoration because it is mountainous and many parts of the country uh, has similar problems as we have seen. So uh, in order to uh, overcome this, there is a change in policy, first of all, as we have uh, recently uh, a law in, in, in forestry that's, uh, um, which, uh, which emphasizes on uh, tree farmers uh, and then um, it also uh, gives uh, attention to attention to rehabilitation of uh, lands by cooperatives. Uh, much more is agroforestry practices being emphasized also in, with this uh, uh, activity. So um, uh, having this, uh, we can uh, uh, achieve in, in similar endeavors. The budget which we have uh, seen during this practice is like uh, uh, per hectare, about 320 USD. So uh, if we are going to achieve 50 million hectares, the bone challenge pledge will hit about $4.8 billion. Yeah. So uh, in order to uh, overcome this budget deficit, we need to mobilize the public 
So public mobilization is also given due emphasis. And then uh, commitment uh, to uh, prevent free grazing as well as uh, also uh, illegal uh, encroaching into landscapes which are sensitive. Okay, so I'm going did I get it? <laughs> Thank you, Jenna, for the insights.